All right, let's bring in Juan Lucero Zelada, who is a Latin America analyst at the School of Transnational Governance of European University Institute Florence. He joins me now from Guatemala City. Good to have you on the show. Um, all right, so if you're building a giant prison like this, it means that you have a giant problem. What makes these gangs so powerful? Thank you very much for having me. I've been following this debate about how to approach this gang um, issue in, in Latin America. And mainly the debate has been focused on if we should prioritize the human rights of the inmates or the human rights of the population outside the, the, um, the incarceration places. But actually the main question is exactly what you are telling me about. What is the root cause of violence? And when we go to the root cause of violence, we go to structural and cultural elements. And there is when we can realize that incarceration places, jails itself, they cannot help us to address this problem if we want to reduce violence and to build peace in Central America. So as much as they are needed, of course, we need uh, places where people can um, fulfill the consequences of violent actions we also need a more holistic approach. The problem with this approach, more holistic, is that most of the time, these preventing measures take time to actually have an effect in society. But I think that the president of El Salvador, Nayib Bukele, right now has a big um, political capital and a huge uh, uh, popularity among the population in El Salvador that also give us a unique opportunity to think about a new way to approach this, this, um, this phenomenon. Um, there are good examples of the mobilization processes around Latin America and also good examples of victim reparation processes that actually address the grievances that the violence of gangs produce in the region. So this could be also a different approach uh, that could be complementary to the one of a big jail. Juan, tell me this. I mean, you, you talked about sort of it being sort of a fine line between uh, when it comes to human rights. I mean, how does the president uh, develop? Um, you also said it's going to take time. So I'm going to ask you a long term strategy uh, that can actually contain uh, this problem when it comes to gang violence without a violation or gross violation of human rights. Yes, that, that's, that's a huge challenge, especially because what history has shown us in Latin America is that what we call these policies of mano dura or strong hand of creating just incarceration places, these incarceration places just become a networking place for gang members. So in the, in the short term, they might reduce the, the direct violence, but in the long term, they don't address the root cause of violence. So we, of course, we need these incarceration places, but we need to change the structural and cultural elements that are creating the gangs. Gangs members are a youth generation that right now they don't find their place in the society. And putting them in jail is not the only alternative that we have. There are other alternatives that we can use. Tell me about those alternatives. Of course, mainly is through education and to have opportunities. Most of these gang members find those opportunities and those uh, um, structural elements in the gangs. We should provide some alternatives. Um, and also, of course, we need to have um, a certain cultural elements that we need to address in the whole region. Another element that is important is that the gang phenomena is not exclusive from El Salvador. Here in Guatemala and in Honduras, we have the same problem. So in order to address this challenge, I think it should be at the regional level. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good point that you make. All right, Juan Lucero Zelada, thank you very much for joining us here on this segment. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me.